Hi, everyone. First, today, let's go over some news articles. Then we'll hit the economic calendar. And then we have some longer term charts to go over. And we'll finish up with my positions going in tomorrow. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this almost every day, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. Starting off with Beijing and China. We've talked about this several times, so I'm not going to go into a ton of detail, but understand that China is coming out of their COVID zero policy. Their economy is starting to come back to life. It's certainly going to take a little bit of time, just like it did in the U.S., to get things back to going. You can see you can see here they mentioned morning traffic surged by 90 percent and they are heavily congested. So it's going to take a little while for things to get back to normal, just like it did here. But understand that this could help the global economy as China becomes a bigger contributor going forward. Moving over to the federal budget, the U.S. House and Senate passed a $1.7 trillion bill, and it already is sent to Joe Biden, who is expected to sign it very quickly. It mentions here he is eager to sign it. This authorizes $772 billion for defense and almost $50 billion for Ukraine and $40 billion for natural disaster recovery. So quite a bit of money here, the vast majority of it going to defense as well as defense of Ukraine. This is generally good for the markets. This gets a little bit of uncertainty out of the way. There was concerns the federal government might shut down, but that's not going to happen now. And of course, this is a lot of spending, and it might be worth looking into Boeing and Lockheed and some of those defense contractors who are going to get some of this $770 billion. Also, let's mention tax loss harvesting this year. In down years, you might see a little bit of a sell-off before the end of the year, people locking in those losses so they can claim them on their taxes going forward. And that's generally why we don't see a Santa Claus rally on down years. People are selling their stocks. They're not trying to buy a bunch of stocks going into the next year. And that's what I do expect here. They mentioned specifically bonds, which have had a pretty terrible year. Not to say that everything else hasn't. It's been a tough year overall, but absolutely bonds have been tough. And we shouldn't expect a Santa rally because of the tax loss harvesting that's going to be happening and has already been happening so far. Moving over to the economic calendar, you can see here there's nothing for today. Trade goods comes in on Tuesday morning. Not a lot this week overall. Pending home sales expected to improve a little bit, up to minus 1.8 from minus 4.6. So a slight improvement there. And then jobless claims expected to be at 220,000 for initial claims. And then continuing doesn't have a projection, but the previous number was 1.67 million. So that'll be interesting to see if the job market continues to stay strong. Because if it does weaken, that could cause the Fed to at least consider what they're doing and potentially slow down rate increases, which I think they're going to do anyway. But this would be another indicator that they are going to do either slower hikes or pause their hikes altogether, at least in the short term. Moving over to the long term charts, this is the SPX on the monthly view. Things that I'm looking at here is how this month closes. We're in the last week of the month, which is the last month of the year. And if it closes right here, January is also going to be lower. You can see the RSI does not look good. We're ticking down here through the 50. And in terms of momentum, we're exactly the same as we were last month. So if we get a little bit more selling, I expect that red bar to be an increasing momentum bar going into January. Similarly to what we had here going into the high of the year last year, we had three months of declining, one month of pop, which was the high. And similarly here, we have three months of declining. I would expect one month of pop in January if this does decline here, or even if it's flat, and that's potentially going to be the bottom. I've said multiple times I do expect this to come in and test the SPX high if we do continue on this trend and we don't find a bounce at this 3,700 level, which was the support which held in October. So that would be so that would be very close to a double bottom, and but potentially a little bit short. That would make the 55-month EMA be the support which should be around 3564, somewhere in that zone. A couple of levels of support in there, but if we don't get that support, then we have to expect that 3200 is going to be the low, which is the high from January of 2020. If we do get to that point, I do think that's going to be a very strong level of support, but that is a little bit of speculation. So a couple of things to look for here, and then whether we're going to come into that high going forward. Moving over to the NASDAQ, it has been weaker here. You can see we touched the 55-month EMA already this month. So slightly lower than everything else. And the next level of support is actually still slightly above the February of 2020 high. You can see it's currently sitting at about 10,300. But if we do get to that level, you have to expect that there will probably be a pin to the previous high. But that could still potentially cause this support to hold. And right now, this trend is still intact. We just are coming into the bottom of this trend line. 
and it looks pretty bad because we did false break out there and then we're moving from the top of the channel to the bottom of the channel which is pretty significant from top to bottom that's about 37 and a half percent maybe a little bit more 38 percent if we hit it next month there's still potential that this support holds and we're not going to move down into this this 144 month ema which would be a huge decline from there obviously i don't think that's going to happen that seems pretty unlikely but we do have to entertain the fact that it could happen moving over to the dow on the monthly you can see this a very long-term trend we did touch the 55 already and we rejected very strongly from that we're currently sitting above the midpoint here which has been a level of support multiple times and so far we came in and retested that and it looks like it's going to hold here potentially going forward and we might get an up month in the dow or at least a sideways month we still have the 55 ema which did act as support here in october certainly we could go through this and retest the 55 but even if we do i would expect that to hold because the stocks in the Dow are quite resilient and not as much growth. Looking at the MACD here, you can see significant steps down. If we do close right here, or maybe even a little bit higher, you do have to expect that the next month could be positive. We come into this 50 right here, the 50 level holds on RSI, and then we get a move higher. That would be an indicator of a potential uptrend, which could mean we're going to move back into this next level of resistance, which would be pretty significant. That would be about 20 to 25% of upside in the Dow. But it is crazy how different the Dow is versus the S&Ps in the NASDAQ. Both those look pretty terrible. But the Dow is definitely showing some structure, potentially already bottomed on this down move so far. Moving over to the put call ratio from the CBOE. I saw a lot of people talking about this, so let's talk about it. You can certainly see there is a gentle uptrend in the put call ratio. So more puts than calls. We're above the one level. So more puts than calls overall. And last week, we did get very high up to 1.6 which is pretty extended. It's pretty high compared to where we've been here recently. Last time we were at those levels was at the dip in March of 2020. So puts to calls going higher. And generally, that's an indicator that there's quite a bit of bearish sentiment. And that means that we could have potentially bottomed. Usually, I play the inverse of what most people are doing. And if people are buying puts, I think it's unlikely that we're going to follow through on those puts and that it's more likely that we could move higher based on this data. Otherwise, this is definitely a structure that's worth watching here. Previously, we had a structure that was declining before we had that breakout for the COVID lows. And then we continued declining all the way into January of 2021, which was right in the vicinity of the high. And then we started this gentle uptrend in the down move that we've had recently. Moving over to the NASDAQ divided by the SPX. You can see here we're still in that downtrend, big leg down last week, although we are getting fairly close to support which did mark a bottom here for this ratio on the week of 7 November. And then we had that up move to almost the three ratio. But it looks like we're going to come down potentially this week back down to 2.82, which is a fairly significant level. You can see we're in this zone where we had the bounce in February and March of 2020. So we're getting back down to that same ratio that we had at the COVID low. Moving over to the NASDAQ divided by the Russell, you can see on the weekly chart, we are still moving down, but there is some structure here. We did have a bounce at a lower level at the end of October where we did move up slightly and we could potentially show support in this zone at the end of the month. And if this breaks down here, that's going to be a big indicator that the NASDAQ is moving lower versus the other major indices. And this structure has been intact for quite a while here over the last few years. So again, if this structure breaks down, that's going to be bad news for the NASDAQ. And overall, if you're planning to short, it seems like the NASDAQ is the best one to short because it is the weakest of the indices right now. Moving over to stocks above their 200-day moving average, again, showing this divergence between the August high and this most recent high in November. More stocks participating in the rally, and we did actually have an up week this week, move slightly higher in terms of stocks rallying. We didn't even come in and test the 55 EMA or the 21 EMA. So there's definitely potential that this is just a short term bounce and that this is going to continue down next week. And you can also see that momentum here is fading similarly to what we had in the August dip. We did have that one up week during that down move. But so far, we've had consistent down moves on the MACD. And I would expect that that's going to continue here next week. Moving over to the dollar DXY on the weekly chart. Looking at the MACD here, you can see we're starting to get a little bit more significant steps down. Momentum is definitely fading to the downside. Looks like the 55 EMA is going to hold. And if we do get that bounce, we should expect that we're going to come back into maybe 108, this high back from July of 2022, potentially left shoulder, head, right shoulder type scenario. And this would be coming into that right shoulder. If this does not break through that level, then we have to expect it's going to roll over, which could be good for stocks. 
in the medium term, but in the short term, I expect this to rally, which should push stocks down at least a little bit. However, if it turns out to be a right shoulder and this does roll over, that should be good for stocks in the medium term. So that's definitely something to keep an eye out for. Moving over to JNK on the weekly chart, you can see we had a big gap down and then a doji at that level, which did test the previous low from July of 2020. It does seem like we had kind of an inverse head and shoulders forming. It's a little bit slanted for sure, but you have a shoulder, that head. And if this does not break 89 and we get a level of support here, this could potentially be turning up. I don't know how likely that is with the MACD rolling over pretty significantly, similar to what we saw here in August, fairly significant steps down. If we get another step down, you have to expect that that's going to continue until we get a similar move like this where we get into red territory and then a fade and then a bounce, which certainly could be coming into this 550 level. That is my next level of resistance, which does coincide with, which does the COVID lows here in March of 2020. And if you go back, that actually correlates with the 2008 crisis as well. So that's how cheap bonds are right now, similar to the 2008 crisis and the COVID lows, not that far off of them, but it could potentially come into that zone. And I don't think we would go much lower than that if we did get into that area. Moving over to TLT on the weekly chart, big red bar, very solid, closed almost right at the low here. And if it's going to bounce, it's going to have to bounce early next week. And we're going to get that two legs here. So we have the big down move and then a big engulfing green candle right up to support. If we do get that next week, then you would expect TLT to move higher in the following weeks, which is certainly possible. We're still above the 9 EMA on the weekly chart, indicating that this is still potentially an up move. We didn't get below that, so that trend is still intact. Although it's worth noting that the MACD is indicating this is probably going to roll over. And we did get up to that 50 line on the RSI. Couldn't quite break it, and we're selling off from there, indicating that we are still in a downtrend similar to what we saw in July of 2020, didn't get up to the 50, and then we started selling off, which indicated that this was going to start selling off, which definitely did happen all the way to these lows at 92, 93 level. So keep an eye on this one. If we do start to see this rally early in the week, and it's potentially going to give us that up week close, TLT could be going higher. But if this does just can pop here, the MACD rolls over next week, this could potentially be looking at at least a double bottom, if not a lower low. Moving over to the VIX on the weekly chart, you can see momentum is basically flat from the previous week, even though we did get a lower low. Further move in momentum, we are below the 50 on RSI, meaning that this could potentially go lower, maybe give us slightly higher highs in stocks. You can see the structure of rallies is breaking down here. That doesn't mean that we can't move up and retest this 2850 level, giving us a slightly lower high, giving us a lower low and a lower high potentially next week. But right now you have to stick with momentum similar to what we had here in August which was the high momentum on the MAC. Momentum for the VIX did start to fade to the downside and rally to the upside, giving us that October low. And right now, this is giving us a similar signal. However, if this does continue to move down tomorrow, that would be really interesting. I think most people are expecting the VIX to move higher next week. And it certainly is at a level of support where it could definitely do that. And this is one I'm keeping my eye on. If this moves down, then we could potentially get some higher highs. I think that would be contrary to most of the charts that we saw here today. And I do expect the VIX to bounce at least a little bit. But right now, we are still pointing to the downside. Moving over to my positions for tomorrow. I have two covered calls here. I do think the market is going to move up slightly tomorrow, maybe not even for the whole day. And I might take these off early depending on what we're seeing. But I am just moderately bullish, very minor here. I have two calls covering me for about a dollar of downside on Tuesday. And we'll see exactly what that looks like. I'm definitely keeping a close eye on these, and I'm not really intending to hold them throughout the session, but we did have an update on Friday, and we do have to respect the potential for at least another slight update. Let me know down in the comments section where you think the market is going to go tomorrow, or are we just going to go sideways with low holiday momentum? Do you think tax loss harvesting is going to be a bigger factor, or is that pretty much complete at this point? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.